So kid, you want to be an engineer? Nah. So what's the point of getting a degree in engineering if you aren't going to use it? Well, why aren't you getting a degree in engineering, huh? Ever think of that? <laughs> Damn, you got me there, brother. Hey there, folks. My name's Oliver. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about 10 different non-engineering jobs that you can get with an engineering degree. This video is coming from inspiration of a video I did earlier where 75% of engineers do not end up working in engineering, so if you haven't seen that video yet, I definitely recommend checking it out first, and then come back here and you can figure out what job you can get. So, as I mentioned, here are the 10 different things that I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to be going over some of the pros and the cons, the salary growth potential, and all of the things you would want to know, like how to get into the field if you need to do extra schooling, and all that good stuff, so let's get into it. Alright, so kicking it off at number one, we have web developer slash software engineer. Now, I know this is technically still an engineering job, but this is a job that you can get regardless of the engineering field that you are in. So if you're a mechanical engineer and you don't really like mechanical engineering, but you still want to do something kind of close to engineering, then you can do web development or software engineering. It's easy enough to learn and there's tons of courses online that can help you get up to speed and your salary growth potential is honestly pretty wild depending on the companies that you work for. Uh, but the average starting salary is about $72,000 in the US which is very good. And yeah, this is definitely nothing to sneeze at. So if you don't really want to do traditional engineering, then maybe take a look at some software engineering. You don't need a degree. Some negatives of choosing this is that it can be notoriously difficult to actually get a software engineering job because there's so much competition. And the things that you'll be doing can be very challenging and difficult, and you'll probably end up working really long hours because everybody else around you is also doing it, so the work-life balance isn't really there. So those are the basics of our buddy, the software engineer. Now let's move on to number two. So the second potential career that I found for engineers who don't want to work in engineering is accounting. Um, so this job is very cool. Your salary, starting salary, is pretty good. It's about average at about $52,000 but the salary growth potential is very good, very high. You can get some good salaries. And you can grow in your career, choose different types of accounting. You could do forensic accounting, tax accounting, corporate accounting. There's tons of accounting to choose from. And it helps that engineers are very good with numbers, so upskilling to what you need to know is not going to be all that difficult. But some of the downsides is that it does usually take about two years of extra schooling to upskill to an accountant level. And you'll probably be working some long hours because accountants have a lot of stuff to do and have to stay extremely organized. You're also working with other people's money, so sometimes that can be touchy, and if you screw up, it can be a big problem. So you have to have some very good attention to detail as an accountant. There's not too much to say about this one. I did make a video about why engineers make good accountants, so go check that out if you're interested. If not, let's move on to number three. Similarly related to accountant, now we have investment banker. So if you're interested in stocks and you want to make a lot of money, investment banking is a great way to go. But your starting salary is going to be about average until about three or four years into your career until you move up to be a senior investment banker. You probably won't be making all that much money and you will be worked to the freaking grave. I don't know if you guys have seen those videos out on YouTube talking about how investment bankers' mental health are completely destroyed. Have some mental stability before going into this kind of career because all of the work gets dumped on you as a junior analyst. And on top of that, you end up working probably over 100 hours per week just because the learning curve can be really steep and there's tons of work for you to do, and the senior guys just don't really want to do it, or they're so much better at it than you are that they can get it done in half the time. So be prepared for that if you want to go into investment banking, but three or four years down the line, when you get really good at it, you can start making a boatload of cash working with different deals, and if you get into a merger and acquisition deal and you're actually some level of partner or senior analyst, you can get a percentage of a commission which is crazy and much better than getting just a base salary. So if you like stocks, you like putting together investment analysis of companies, and you don't mind working the extremely long hours, then definitely think about investment banking. All right, next up on the list, we have number four, which is a tradesperson. This is honestly extremely overlooked, and I know it's kind of weird to tell you that you can be a tradesperson 
after you've already done an engineering degree, but hear me out. If you really prefer to just work with your hands, do the hands-on stuff, and not really think too much about the numbers, then being a tradesperson can be a really rewarding career, especially in the United States and Canada because there is a huge shortage of tradespeople. Some cons here are that there is lots of health problems associated with being a skilled tradesperson because you're doing a lot of manual labor, so you have to make sure that you're doing the things correctly so that you don't damage your body in any way. And the final problem with choosing to be a tradesperson is that you will likely have to do at least one more year of school, plus somewhere around three years of an apprenticeship before you can actually work as a full plumber, electrician, or whatever this particular trade that you're interested in is. So that's it for number four. Now let's get on to number five, which is a lawyer. So naturally, if you like the law and you like researching things about the law and you like figuring out stuff about the law and you like, you know, presenting your case, putting together case studies and things like that, then being a lawyer could be a really fun career. You can get paid a lot of money if you work in corporate law or any other type of law, really. So it, it can be a really good and rewarding career. But some of the downsides are that it's at least two more years of school and it can cost you between 50 and 200,000 more dollars in order to finish this degree. You'll also probably be dealing with a lot of different stressful types of people and you'll be working long hours. So those are some other downsides to definitely think about if you want to be a lawyer. Next up, we have number six, doctor. If you wanna be a doctor, then you can definitely do that after getting your engineering degree. If you're interested in helping people and you're interested in going out of your way and learning about human anatomy, then being a doctor can definitely be a good career choice. You can make a lot of money, but on the downside, you have to go to school and pay somewhere between $100,000 and $400,000 to finish your doctor's degree. It'll take you between four and six years. And you have to really like human anatomy and all of those other things. And you can't really be too squeamish because you're going to be seeing a lot of blood and other things that aren't too pleasant to see. But if you want to make a lot of money, then you can definitely become a doctor. It's a great choice. And next up, number seven is a teacher slash professor. This is another great career and it can be really rewarding to see that your students are actually learning the things that you're teaching them and it can be a great way to make a decent amount of money. Some problems though, if you live in the USA, is that a lot of teachers there are underpaid, so just come to Canada. <laughs> Another problem is that you'll have to do at least one to two more years of school or get an entire PhD if you're going to be a professor. And this can, and it can be really expensive nowadays to do this extra schooling, and on top of that, if you're not too keen on children and you're going to be a school teacher, then you should probably reconsider maybe doing something else. Um, yeah. Number eight, we have politician. If you're passionate about a certain political topic or you want to be a politician one day, then working for a campaign can be a great way to get started. This can also be considered somewhat of a noble thing to do because you're fulfilling some type of civic duty by being a public official and expressing the opinions of the people, at least in a democracy. And another great thing is that you probably won't have to do more school if you want to do this one and you can just do it right away. However, you'll probably run into some problems with friends, family, and just people in general not liking the things that you represent, and that just kind of comes with the territory, so if you're thinking about this, you have to be prepared to kind of get some hate. Another downside is that you probably won't be making a whole lot of money working for a campaign until you actually start to run for office yourself and then get elected. So if you're interested in politics and you like talking about it, maybe you could be a politician. And second to last, we have a corporate salesperson. This job is essentially working with your company and other companies and trying to sell them goods and services in order to gather more business customers and more business for your company. If the company that you work for realizes that you're a really good salesperson, you can work your way all the way up to a manager and actually make quite a bit of money doing this. If you like talking to people and pitching things and representing your particular company, then this can be a great job for you. I can't really think of too many cons and you don't really need any extra education to do this. You just need to be an outgoing person, have a little bit of sales experience, and that's it. The only thing I can foresee is that if you're someone like a car salesman, which isn't particularly corporate sales, then people might dislike you a little bit just because they've been trained to. 
And last but not least, we have scientific research slash scientist. This is a great job if you're interested in doing research and working in a lab, and you might even get to discover something new or really help out the world and create something, you know, amazing. Some downsides are that the salary might not be very impressive because oftentimes people doing scientific work can struggle to find funding. So if you do want to go down this career path, a better option might be to kind of tie this to a professorship and try to get your PhD and then work in scientific research. So that about wraps it up for our 10 jobs that you can work that are not related at all to engineering. And of course, some of them require you to do a bit more schooling and some of them have some really good earnings potential. So be sure to think about this. If you're one of those 75% who won't end up working in engineering, you're probably gonna need a list like this one. Anyway, that about wraps it up. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, leave me a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all next time.